Hello gorgeous ones, how are we? Dr. Lucy here, five, just after 5.0, 5.0 something or other. I hope you're having a wonderful week. I'll wait for a few of you to jump on. I've got a slightly, I'm always wondering, again, my film crew who never turn up, mean that I have to set up my own thingies, which is wonderful, but it means you get a slightly different view of my kitchen every time. And if you actually look to past this section, it's chaos. So this section looks nice, this section looks like chaos. In fact, this section has got a bit of uh, a few cords poking on. And tonight I'm actually cooking something in a pot. So I know sometimes a lot of you wish that you could see what I'm cooking. And one day when I'm rich and famous and I have my own TV show, maybe I'll have a camera crew that come around and do all of that. But in the meantime, I've just got me and you get a pot, you get me, and you get a whole lot of flinging in. So tonight I'm cooking a stroganoff, but it's not very traditional because it's whatever was left over in my fridge and I think that's the way we should cook. You don't, I mean, follow recipes if you want. There's, there's no, you don't need to not follow a recipe if that's the way you like to cook. But if you've got stuff in your fridge that needs using up, use it. It doesn't have to be traditional. So I often think, oh, it's like a, a base. Now I'm just gonna put in some ghee. So ghee, every now and then I cook with ghee if I've got enough. So I made this one. And what it is, it's, a, it's actually, um, it's the butter and all the dairy proteins have been um, kind of cooked and they sink to the bottom like a sediment and then you strain it. So I've got a bit of this left and I did heat it up beforehand because trying to sort of scoop out some ghee. Now my pot thinks I haven't loved it. So I'm just gonna fling a bit of that in. It, it's, a, it's very similar to butter, but it gives a nutty taste and it doesn't burn. Now, here's some tricks, right? So I am the queen of freezing meat and then forgetting to take it out of the um, freezer to use it. So I've got some left over our cow. As you know, I do love this company and they've been around, they're all over the place at the moment um, because they source ethical, grass-fed beef and they give, you know, they're direct from the farmer. So there's no factory farming and it's really how meat was meant to be produced. So I don't have enough of, of, I've only got 500 grams of beef and as you know, I like to batch cook. So I did, I was thinking, oh, I don't even have time to thaw it before I'm talking to you lovelies. But you know what? You can actually cook mince if you're clever, which of course I am without thawing. So I'm just showing you that this is literally, like it's seriously, it's a lump of mince. Like, oh. in fact, what I want to do is try and turn it over, yeah, to get, because what I, what I don't want to cook in my mince is that, um, you know, that black thing, like that's no good for you. Um, fun fact, <laughs> fun facts by Lucy. So here is a hunk of, of mince, and, and I'm basically just gonna pull that in. I'll just make sure the bee's all around. And then the key is to just to keep turning it over. And then because I didn't have enough mince, I found some sizzle steak. And again, just because beef stroganoff says you have to use little um, things of beef, you know, strips, who says? You can make up your own rules. You're the boss of you. So I'm actually going like all over. And I've got some sizzle steak, which again is frozen because I didn't take it out of the freezer. And what I'm gonna do is actually chop it. So this is, <laughs> this is like five little steaks stuck together, but it'll chop pretty easily as it does. And then once it goes into the pot, you just um, turn it and they'll all break apart and they'll be perfectly fine. So you don't have to, as I said, you don't have to follow any rules. The main rule is just food hygiene and making sure that you wouldn't then cook a salad on this meat plate and serve that. You can certainly chop your veggies that are going into your stir fry on a, on a meat plate. You don't have to worry about that because they're getting cooked. So, you know, it doesn't matter. All right. Now, I've realised I've forgotten a wooden spoon. I always forget something. I'll just grab a spoon. Um, so the key, if you're cooking your 
frozen, if you're cooking stuff frozen, the key is to turn it. You turn it frequently and then the bottom cooks and you sort of just scrape the top of it as it does it. And then you've just got, because what you don't want obviously is browned meat on the outside and raw and cold on the inside. That would be the end sun. So, you can of course microwave your frozen mince if you want to. There's nothing wrong with that. And you can of course put it in hot water if you want to. There's nothing wrong with that either. I just didn't have time to do either of those beforehand. And it's faster to cook it straight out of the freezer into your pot as long as you're prepared to do a bit of stirring. And you'll see that this doesn't take very long because I'm in here stirring it now. Just turning the heat up a little bit on it and it'll just zoom away. So I hope you've all had a good week. It's a bit scary, isn't it, what's going on in Australia? And I'm sure, you know, I've learned two new words this week and I've forgotten the first word. They're German words. One is like Freud and Freud. And the other one is like Siegen Freud or something. And I'll have to get the actual um, experience when somebody is, uh, one of somebody you love is doing well. So, you know, we all experience that with our kids and our siblings and our parents and all those sorts of things. But extending that out to just people that you like. It's really, it's a really good, and sometimes it has to be intentional, because every now and then what happens is that we see somebody doing well, and the first thing we do is think it's all about us. You know, oh my God, they're doing so well. And this happens a lot in, particularly in weight loss circles, where people go, oh my God, they've lost 10 kilos and I've only lost two, or they've lost 25 kilos and I've lost five. And so when you do that comparison, you actually steal your joy. And that is a phrase we use a lot. Comparison is the thief of all joy. So the op so that actually is what the Scheugen Freud word is, or whatever it is, is when you feel a bit Ugh, that somebody's doing well. And the opposite of that is this Freud and Freud word, which is when you feel great that everyone's doing well. And I love that because what that is, it follows our favorite, some of our other favorite um, thoughts, which are a rising tide lifts all boats. Now, I totally love that. Don't you love that? So that when it comes from this abundance mindset that we don't, just because one person's doing well, that doesn't mean that other people can't. Like, it's not like there's just this one pot of doing well in whatever field you're in. And if they take a piece of that out of that pot, then that means you don't have as much. It's not like that at all. It's actually the more that people do well, then the better everyone feels. And I, I absolutely think that that is true. So certainly for those of you who are entering lockdown, and I know there's a lot of you, Sydney, Gold Coast, Perth, and lots of you um, on who watch this cooking show or who follow us in real life medicine and I can think of you um, will be affected by these current lockdowns. So I was talking a bit about it this morning. It is absolutely normal to feel worried about this and absolutely normal to think that, and it might not even be worried, it might be cross, it might be angry, it might be really, really pissed off because whilst Victorians aren't locked down because we've had our little lockdown. We can't go anywhere. So it's school holidays and so many people have had to cancel their holidays because they can't go to the places that we would normally go to in winter. So we were meant to go to WA, um, which they wouldn't let us in anyway because, but even if we did, then we'd be in lockdown. So that's not gonna be any good anyway. Um, I know that there are some people in Darwin on holidays who can't get out of their rooms. And I know plenty of people in Melbourne who are wishing that they could go somewhere other than Melbourne. But here's, some, here's a bit of a, um, you know, bit of a silver lining for you. For Melbourne, Melbourne turned on the most brilliant day of all day. Like one of those beautiful winter days where it's 
cooled in the morning, it was like three degrees. The sun shone all day. It was lovely sitting in, looking out my window at work and the sun was streaming in and I just thought really, we were, yeah, times are tough, that's for sure, but you know, try and find that silver lining, if you like, or that bit of sunshine, because the way I like to look at it is that certainly you don't need to deny your feelings. You are allowed to feel cross. You're allowed to feel upset. You're allowed to feel disappointed. You're allowed to feel frightened. All of those are the normal range of full, the full range of human emotions, and you're allowed all of those. What happens sometimes is we don't like to experience them. They're uncomfortable. And that's when we start eating or drinking. Because it feels so awful, you don't want to deal with it. So you eat chocolate because that makes you feel better. And it does, short term. But it doesn't take away anything because the way to discharge, if you like, these negative emotions is just let them be. They go away by themselves, all emotions do. So that mint stuff is now cooked, completely cooked through, not a scrap of rawness. And I'm just gonna fling this in. I'm not so worried about this because this will all just um, break down. What I didn't wanna have was just big clumps of, of mints. So basically I'm, I'm just gonna pan fry that meat off, brown it. I'm flinging in some, you know, my famous chopped onions. Oh, somebody's just checked my phone and hoping to see sardines in the cupboard. Oh God, I know I still haven't got my sardines. I meant to do them today, I completely forgot. So um, I do have to do that, wow. God, you guys are calling me out big time. You know what it'll be? I wonder if it's gonna be like green eggs and ham where I'm gonna go, oh, how have I been missing out on this all my life? 50 years and I could have been eating more and more sardines. I reckon that could be like that. All right, so remember, I like to use up stuff that's been in my cupboard. I've got some mushrooms that are really on their last legs, which is why I decided to cook strong enough because not only have I got this bag of mushrooms, um, I've got a couple of actual bags of mushrooms that I'm going to need to chop. So, and I've got a, what do you call this thing? Eggplant that's really also, if I don't use it today, it might, and I, you know, I might have to go in the bin. And as you know, I hate binning stuff just because I haven't been organised enough to cook it. So, therefore, it gets shoved into the stroganoff. It's not a traditional stroganoff vegetable, but who cares? So I'm going to chop that, and I chop it chunky. Again, I don't, I don't want to. I'm not skilled enough to be doing that chop, 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 chop that people do with fine, fine cooking. And I'm not. I don't really like that. So, and I just sort of chop all together. The good thing about this, how's this for a good trick? Um, this eggplant has sort of soaked up the meat juice that was on my bench. Which, as I said, when you're cooking your vegetables, you can use the same tray. It's only if you're not going to cook them that you would need a clean, um, a clean chopping board and you'd be washing your hands between hand. Or you do what most people would do, which would be to prep your salad, put that away and then put your meat. So there we go. So um, Basically, this will, this will simmer down a bit. And I've got this, that Val, that's the Valverde brand. I didn't realize that there's two different types. And one is a fine one and one's a chunky one. Now, I've got the fine one here, but I'm gonna tell you, I'm never buying the fine one again because I totally love the chunky one. It's way better. It just gives that a little bit more texture and substance. Makes it feel less like you're eating soup and more like you're eating a sauce. So, as you know, because I do everything just banging it into the pot, I don't have to have multiple things brewing. Like I'm thinking, oh, stroganoff, a lot of people would have that with some pasta or some rice or some even cauliflower mash or anything like that. But you know what? Tonight I'm not gonna bother. It's got so many veggies in it. I just am very happy to put it all in the pot. Now, <laughs> I better not forget the actual stroganoff. So, you know, this is a mingle one. It's um, good, it smells good. Um, and I just fling that in and I'm actually going to put two in because it's such a big dish So it's got a kilo of meat and it's going to have probably a kilo of mushrooms and Only one thing of sauce because that's all I've got 
if I get there and decide it's not got enough mixture, I'll just, I'll just put a bit of water in here. You can just, as I said, you just have a go at just having a go. There's, you can't wreck it, like you honestly can't. So these are some portobello mushrooms, which again, I had grand plans of making some sort of stuffed mushroom, but actually life's been a bit busy. So one of the things I've been, that's been on my brain is talking quite a lot about self-care. And I've just, lots of you know, who, will, who watch me on, on, in our group, that um, on the weekend, uh, I ran a self-care retreat with my other lovely doctor friend, Emily. And we uh, were with eight other doctors and, you know, most people think doctors, you know, what, what, what would they need to know about self-care? Because, you know, we're all telling people what to do. But doctors don't do their own self-care. They're really, really bad at it. They're really good at helping other people and they put themselves at the bottom of the list. Much like a lot of you lovelies. Mums in particular, busy, running around after teenagers or little kids, working, looking after older parents, doing all, doing all the things, running businesses, and then their health needs are often at the bottom of the pile. This is gonna be big in this pot. The other thing I've got to fling in is a couple of capsicums. Because again, you know, I like to try and put maybe two or three veggies with each meal. This one's gonna have, hmm, actually quite a lot, mushrooms, onion, eggplant, and the capsicum. There you go, That's your, there's your fourth veg done. Oh, and tomato, and the tomato sauce. So, you know, there's five veggies. Um, along with a great big whack of protein. Um, and then what I'll do is I've got the flavor, and then I've got sour cream for my fat. So that's, it's honestly, it's like a fail, it's a fail safe formula, this. It's always, everything comes out really well. Although the one thing, the one thing I'm going to tell you, confession time. Remember a couple of weeks ago I made a vegetarian thing with tempeh? Don't bother with tempeh. I would never use tempeh again. It was disgusting. So we picked it out and um, next time I cook a, a vegetarian curry for the darlings, I'll be putting tofu in. It's much better. Um, and if you've got two meals, I know a lot of people don't want to cook two meals and that's fair enough. Why should you? So the options are one, everyone eats what you're eating, or two, you do something like this, but you have the sort of vegetarian pot and then you just cook the meat in a separate pot and then mix your meat in with their stuff. So um, basically I'm just going to, I forgot to grab my lid. Can you girls wait there? Um, I'm just gonna go and grab my lid to put this on and I know where this lid is. on and that will all just cook and reduce down now the capsicum doesn't take nearly as long to cook you can have and it doesn't matter if capsicum's a bit crunchy I actually quite like it crunchy in a you know in a kind of stewy thing so but look see do you have to cook you know you don't have to chop it up perfectly just be rough it's so much faster and you you know you get that sort of nice big chunk of vegetables I think I might have, I should call this I keep having different names. I should call it chunky cooking, or as you know, real food, real fast. That's another, that's actually my fave. Um, or cooking, coaching, and conversations. <laughs> Although I do have, <laughs> I'm lucky I'm good at talking because I talk to myself a fair bit because I can never, you know, the things don't always come up. Sometimes they do. Ah, puss hanging out behind you. I know, <laughs> I know. I've got lots of pusses and they're all hanging out. At least they're not trying to jump on the bench. So um, for those of you who wonder, 
We actually have four cats and it's quite ridiculous. Let me tell you the story of how we got four cats. So Ella, you know her, the youngest one, who's actually mm. back, back, she's back. This week she's being good, back to not being horrendous. When she was about 13, maybe younger, maybe 12 actually, 11, I reckon we've had them five years. So when she was about 11, she begged, begged us for a cat. And um, you know, we've got dogs and I've never had a cat and I'm doing the old, no, I'm not a cat person, I'm not getting a cat. And seriously, for three months, this child embarked on, on a multimedia campaign. So we'd be sitting down having dinner and she'd go, now, before we start dinner, I've got a presentation. And she'd whip out her laptop and there'd be this PowerPoint presentation on the pros and cons of having a cat. Then she'd send me little emails and in the email it would say, Dear Mum, you know, you help people for your job and it's really good. And all I want to do is help a cat and save a little cat's life. That can't be too bad, can it? And then we go, oh, as she's 11 and looking beautiful. And then she's, I think the clincher, she sent my husband. So my husband has a look. You know how everyone has, you, you go through little phases. He went through a little phase of loving meerkats. So, um, in fact, he had a t-shirt that said meerkat. Um, but she sent him a, a, a PowerPoint meme or something and it said, Dear Dad, you love meerkats and all I want is a meerkat. <gasps> anyway, consequently, we went to the pet rescue place and she chose out a little kitten and he was really cute. And then our other daughter pops up with, can I have a cat too? I'm going, no way, you haven't done the media campaign. You're just riding in on her coattails. And then Rube said, and then Alice says, come on, mom, let her have a cat. And, uh, sucker. I go, well, all right. So then she chooses a kitten. Then it turns out that the, the, the mum of these two. So then, well, we went home and then I felt bad because it was the mum that was left behind of these two kittens. And the poor mum, she was only a baby when she had them. So she was still only six months old. So I get home and I ring up, have you still got the mum? So we go back and get the mum. So we've got the mum whose name's Madonna, mother. And we had these two boy cats called Nico and Leo. It was all a bit Italian. And then a few months later, a patient of mine had to go into hospital and he didn't have anyone to look after his cat. So I go, oh, oh. After it, you know, what's one more cat? And so, you know, the cat had a nice time, and I took the cat back to him. And then a couple of months later, he had to go back in, and he says to me, "Do you know the cat? The cat hasn't been the same since she came home. She's really miserable. I've got a dog. The dog hates her. They fight all the time. Would you consider having my cat?" And I just went, <gasps> "Anyway, she's actually hilarious. Hilarious is on the cat." So I thought, why not? Why not? Once you've got three, what's four? So consequently, we've got four cats. We're a four cat family. It's crazy. We are crazy cat people. So if ever you don't see a cat or hear one, I don't know if you can hear her, she's at the door, one of the ones is at the door, then you have to think there's something seriously happens, haven't? Something's gone wrong. They've got some sort of virus in their house. So on top of the four cats, we've got three dogs. So the the cats are still winning, except that one of the dogs is a Kelpie. And so she's really the equivalent of about 10 dogs. We've got two older white fluffy lady dogs, and then we've got a Kelpie. And again, I, we don't need television. We've got these cats, that, the pets entertain us. The cats run up and down, the Kelpie chases them, she rounds them up, they stand up. One of them plays with her, the, the last one that we got, whose name is, check this out little because she's small very adventurous so little and Piper run around and chase each other and do you know what one of the things about this is and I know this has got nothing to do with weightless and cooking but it makes me laugh and when I watch them I just feel this little smiley face just mm -hmm. beaming because I just love watching the pets have fun they really do. And I think, um, I'm sure you've seen some of those videos where you've got like dolphins surfing and you, when you see 
somebody or an animal, child, just experiencing or moving for joy, just for the fun of it, it, it resonates back in here. So um, I think, no, Cheryl, I know your little cat's not happy about your doggy, but she, they will, she will, they will get used to each other. Um, so one of the things I would say for this, and this is probably going to have to show you a picture because it is a big pot, it's probably going to take a little bit longer. But I did do a bit of a stir then, the meat's looking good. Turn it up a bit. Um, this week, in our week of uncertainty, in our week of disappointments, in our weeks of lockdowns, which are still going to come ahead every day, try and find something little that makes you smile or laugh or snigger. And whether that's a funny cat meme about a mere cat, whether it's your dog chasing your cat and they're all having fun, or whether it's a birdie flapping around in a pond, whatever, just look for it because every day it's there. It really is. And it just balances that other heartache and misery that we've got of, of disappointment. And you don't need to eat or drink to bury those feelings down. All right, lovelies, um, I'm gonna wind it up because I'm not doing anything other than yakking. I will show you a picture of this magnificent feast when it's done. I might even take a little video. And I hope that you all have a wonderful week. I'm on, um, I'm on the Facebook group in the morning. I'm on all this week because Dr. Mary is off doing a, another locum in another rural town. And she'll be back next week and I will see you all soon. Bye, lovelies.